Bodhi Jar with Cellar Door, and that's author self titled EP. It came out about a year ago, and I've commented on the song before, but I really like it because it's so intense. And like I've said before, it really reminds me of At the Drive In, and I did mention that during their interview when they popped by this Bone Studio for an interview. And it's it just that much of an intense show. I mean, they they put on like Andy is definitely the showman. Like he uh, he puts on a good show just himself, you know. And the whole band is just very tight and just very very talented. Like great band. Yeah, for sure they sound tight. Um, well, the whole song is like clearly a Donnie Darko reference, which I could like completely appreciate. Like I don't know if you remember the movie at all, but uh, Drew Barrymore's character who is the teacher was talking about how cellar door is the most perfect phrase in the English oh, language. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and like there were a couple that. of lines in this song that I think I remember from the movie like, every creature dies alone was a line I think that Donnie Darko said. I never and, even thought of that. Wow. Yeah, so I mean, if that's what it is, then like, that's really cool. Um, yeah, super cool. High energy. Yeah, intense stuff. Really good. Right on. So next up, we're going to get to a band uh, from the U.S., a band called Reset the Plan. Actually, just one guy's name is Jeff, and uh, he'll be on the show in a couple of weeks. And uh, Reset the Plan is his project, and he's done a, a few things with them and a lot of songs. So this one is called, where is it, right here? Uh, Reset the Plan, here it goes. It won't phase me. This is actually a pretty cool song. Dig this, Reset the Plan. <laughs>
Recite the plan with It Won't Phase Me. Now that's one of his older tunes, I think it might be like 2007-ish, like right around there. Mm -hmm. But still good tune nonetheless, uh, very alternative, uh, very grunge, and uh, I just always love the power behind his vocals and the difference of his tunes because i played many of his tunes over the past like month, month and a half or so. And they all vary, but they still kind of have the same kind of idea to it, whereas like the vocals are still powerful and strong. And it just, even though he's doing all the stuff himself, it sounds very tight. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a fun tune. I'm talking about how it kind of sounded silver chairish. Yeah, yeah, it had some old grunge sounds. <laughs> yeah, I liked it a lot. I, I really like grunge music, so I, I'm really happy actually that people are starting to explore that again. Because it was a good time for music, I think. Yeah, for definitely. Sure. It's, it died out too quickly. Well, yeah, that was my high school days too, like, you know, and, and just little by little, yeah, I just slowly phased out and. And the saddest thing, it's just like the 70s because like half of them are dead. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah know, you're like, right. Yeah. OD, 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 OD. 27, 45, Scott Weiland, right? Yeah. So oh, yeah. Lane Staley was know. like 40 something, maybe, when he when, uh, when they found him. And uh, that was a pretty gruesome find at that. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were just talking about that the other day, actually. And it was eight years to the day that Kirk Cobain had committed suicide. And like, so I was like, I had done not necessarily because it was planned because that's when he was found, that's necessarily when he died. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, but just to have to find him by like teeth records is pretty gruesome, right? Because he was just bad addicted to heroin, and, like, and he beat it once. Pretty much after dirt, uh, was when he cleaned up a little bit, but unfortunately, it didn't take too long before he slipped right back into it, and that's one of the reasons they kicked out uh, their drummer, their original drummer, uh, Mark Kenny, or uh, no, sorry, uh, um, their bassist, sorry. Oh uh, yeah. Because uh, uh, Mike Starr, we listened with Mike Inez. Because yeah. Mike Starr was, was too into heroin. And I mean, Lane Staley had his own issues just in general, but he kind of helped with it with problems. So they kicked out Mike Starr and got Mike Inez. Yeah. And uh, things got a little better, but it just, like, he just did, he couldn't, couldn't be his demon, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So it's unfortunate. The legend. And uh, I just pretty much the next song here, too. Like, because uh, I was listening to The Unplugged the other day when they did an MDV. And when you saw him there, he looked pretty rough. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, like he did. I mean, the long sleeve because of the trail marks, and he just like super scrawny, and and you can tell because the last Skeletal. album, did, very true. And the last time they did together, you, know, you can tell because Drake and Trell did a lot of the singing and writing just because of the problem. Now he tried to work with it and do what he could, but you know, it's it's, it's sad. But it, unfortunately, in some cases, it's not all cases, but some cases it's part of the, of the lifestyle. So, well, he left us with some great music, so that's one thing that we can be thankful for. Yes. But the last thing before we move on here, one of my favorite songs on the album is uh, at the very end when they're they're kind of wrapping things up and uh, they're gonna like kind of they want an encore, so uh, they do uh, a song that Jerry Control, like, I'm not sure how long it was around for before they played there, it was called The Killer's Me. Yep. And probably one of my favorite Allison Chain tunes ever because the, the, the guitar. Acoustically, I, I just, it's one of those songs that I think it sounds so much better acoustic, so I hope they never do electric. Yeah. Because just, just the, the harmonies of the, of the guitar, and even with like, it's kind of like almost like a, uh, he's playing like an E major, but he's going kind of pretty high up on the fretboard. It's got that kind of, got that kind of creepy feeling, but still, it just sounds so good, and you just, you just, you know, you think about it, electric would probably kill the song. <laughs> so, I mean, that's just my opinion personally, but it's a great tune. <laughs> And uh, so let's get on to our next song here because I've sidetracked long enough. So we're going to get to another one by Ill Advised. And this is off his album called uh, Parkway Divides. The song is called, <coughs> excuse me, Poison the Cure. Take this. <laughs> 